Greetings, you human equivalents of finding loose change at the bottom of your sofa, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Alathrix, and of course, welcome back to the adventure mode where today we're going to be getting a little bit war crimey. Today I have two simple goals, the first of which is to complete our VTOL thing by adding a small weapon to the top, likely an anti-air advanced cannon or something like that, but also... I'm going to be building a nuke, because I haven't built a nuke in a very, very long time. And finally, I think that time is here. So for those who don't know the nukes in this game, are this lovely thing, the tactical nuke. It costs 2,500, which is quite expensive, and as soon as it's damaged or you activate it, it will detonate. The detonation is ridiculous and will destroy pretty much everything it touches in, honestly, a surprisingly small area for something called a nuke, but still a very big area. The reason why I think now is the time is that I have been given a graph with all the average costs of different designs and the different difficulties. Maybe I'll post it here, maybe I won't. But essentially, things are really big and... It's just going to get bigger, and I kept thinking, oh, we have too much resource, we need to, quick to very quickly go to different difficulties, and I was wrong. We are way cheaper than the average thing we are fighting, and especially as we go to higher difficulties, since the next time will be difficulty 50. So, I'm going to move on, find a resource zone, in fact, there might be one just over there. We're going to sit there and complete our craft here. I would like to have a second one of these VTOLs, because I really like them. Then after that, we're building ourselves nukes. Well, that's... fabulous. So that laser is also acting as an anti-missile system, it seems it's its main purpose. Is it truly trying to get closer to hit us with its sword? Oh, I think I may have taken out its batteries or something. That was a very sad slump it just did. Oop, 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 sword, you okay? No, ooh, well, that's... dancing scarily. Never had someone dance menacingly towards me before, but you know, new experiences. Looks even weirder from a distance. So thankfully we didn't lose anything in that fight, um, it mostly focused on our VTOL and that has smoke, so that was pretty much it. What a cool design though. Okay, so I changed my mind. What we've got now instead is two very small railguns kind of just strapped to the top. They're not going to be part of a turret. The reason is, no matter how small I made the turret, I just think it looked really, really goofy. It already looks a little bit goofy because it looks like it's wearing a little hat, but significantly less so. So what we're doing is we're firing shots. They're 100 millimeter and they go 1,300 meters per second, very quick. They have really high armor penetration, so even heavy armor we're gonna be doing full damage on. I think only stacked heavy armor are we gonna run into problems. And they do okay damage. It's like a thousand damage. It's not great, but it's something. I am actually going to go into the sandbox more quickly to make sure these things even work. So I'll be right back. Okay, well that worked well better than I expected. So, um, the last change I made before entering this mode is I've changed them both into 50mm rather than 100mm, focusing more on rapid fire. The shots move at 1,100 meters per second rather than the 1,500 from a moment ago, but clearly it does enough damage to destabilize small targets, and I mean that was all we really wanted, wasn't it? Yep, for a side weapon, that is wonderful. And down it goes. Okay, so versus wooden armor, obviously, it's being able to take out multiple beams per shot. And against metal, it should take out one per shot. But against very light up targets, that's all we want. Just the ability to stabilize and knock things out of the air. The accuracy has a little bit to be desired, though. I'll say that, and I think that's because of recoil, but that's something I can fix back in the adventure mode. Nice. Yeah, the accuracy isn't good enough. That's definitely something I'll have to fix. So many little plasma shots, though. It's very pretty. So what actually is this? This is the... Can't pronounce that. Cool. What is that advanced cannon even firing at? 
Yeah, I need to double check all of our detection systems, and then I need to double check the recoil suppression on that advanced cannon. Though, by the looks of things, we may have already started to sink it. We have so many damage types now, so pure kinetic, heat, regular explosive in many forms, plasma. All we're really missing is things like um, EMP. There we go, the plane's now in range. Well, that might be a lovely final fight for difficulty 45. Don't know how we flipped it so perfectly, though. Hey everyone, Future Lathrix here, as is tradition with these four playthroughs. Just here to say that as is pretty much the theme so far, these videos have just been an utter blast to record. It turns out nuke drones might be one of my all-time favourite things because how derpy they are and then how glorious they are just moments later. So I really do hope you enjoyed this video, it was so much fun to record. And of course, any interaction does help out a lot, YouTube is still punishing me for changing video formats on the fly, so likes and comments, any interaction helps out so much and lets me keep on doing from the depths and doing videos the way I want to do them. Long format series, because sometimes videos just have to be different. So with that, back to the video itself. Oh, although just a quick heads up, there will be a delay between this video and the next one because I'm taking a mini vacation because family are currently in the country and I haven't seen them for ages. So, family time, then back to nukes. I have a good life. Welcome to difficulty 50. So I now have two of our VTOLs, and we're about to go to our first resource zone in difficulty 50. After this, I suppose we'll start work on our nuke drones. Now the nuke drones are going to be... interesting, because they are of course one use each time, but they're going to have to be quick. I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to build them. There's many ways I've built them in the past, I'm trying to think of the cheapest way, which would also not instantly be shot down by these large targets with multiple weapons. Ooh, that was a parcel cannon. Oh, the jellyfish! Oh, I love this thing. I remember wasting so much ammo on it, though, by hitting the wrong spots, so I'm hoping the AI randomly doesn't choose those spots. Basically, just don't fire its center, fire its head. So cool, though. That shield on the front is doing work. I believe they're all anti-missiles, right? Yeah. Hopefully we've got enough to overwhelm it, though. I don't think so. Direct particle cannon hit on one of the copters. They're still going. Lovely. There's one of the tentacles. Has it stopped every single missile? I don't think I've seen a single missile actually connect. Maybe I've got a bit of an over-reliance on missiles. <laughs> they have a lot of reinforced bodies and everything else. They're pretty hard to destroy, but apparently still working out. I think the heat's doing most of the work right now from the two little cannon drones. Stop hurting my new VTOL! Well, it was a long fight, but it was also very one-sided, although it did do some damage to one of our copters with the, with the um, parcel cannon. Not really enough to take one out of the sky. How many of these are there? Now that is a sw- Oh, now that's how you make a aircraft carrier. The problem is it's too small for our vehicles. I mean, I don't even think all these would fit on it, honestly. But yeah, clearly that's how it's meant to look. Rather than how weird raft I've built. A weird symmetrical raft. Okay, we're actually taking them down pretty quickly. With our planes having small plasma, our copters having small plasma, and the uh, new advanced cannons, they're being taken out very quickly once they get too close. The 
problem is this thing's trying to heal them. So, you know what? Let's ignore the small planes actually firing at us and destroy the mothership. Okay, it's mostly just open space. Well, the heat is uh, not loving that, but it's still enough to break some of the innards. I mean, it looks amazing. Why must everything try and hit us with its sword at the moment? Most of the missiles just landed. The heat is definitely hitting it. So is all of the light arms fire. Those will be the uh, planes missiles. That's going into the water, isn't it? Oh, unless it's actually after that cannon drop. It might hit it. Will it actually be able to slice this thing in two? I kind of hope it can. Because that'll look so cool. Nope. Um, also, what's going on there? They shouldn't be attached still. Probably quite a bit of damage to its movement. Yep. Ah, oh, that was kind of a shame, honestly. I hate to go into the sandbox mode twice in one video, but this is one of the few times I'm going to do some serious building in here, because all the other times I've basically built them in the adventure and then tested them in the sandbox just to make sure I don't end up dying because I've missed something or something isn't working as intended. For instance, with our VTOLs, I accidentally added a failsafe to the missile system which stopped them from firing for at least two fights. So for at least two fights back there, our two most heavily armed vehicles weren't firing their main weapon. Because that's the kind of player I am. So then, what we need to do is we need to build our nuke craft. Now the reason, of course, why I want to do this in sandbox mode is because I want to be able to test it over and over again, and a single test means boom. So, I would rather not do that to my own vehicle. So I'll be right back once I've made some mild progress. The old nuke I used, the most functional one, used a load of sub-objects, so a load of turrets, uh, where are you, the two axis turrets, and each of these had the old style blades on them, so essentially these would target the enemy, and then it would just move the vehicle automatically towards it. Don't know if that's going to work anymore, so I think I'm going to probably just build a small plane. That was the most anticlimactic moment of all time. Why did it suddenly veer up at the last second? Anyway, this is just the default stuff. It's just got the RAM AI and I've just thrown together loads of batteries and a nuke. Let's try and make it a bit more useful. Okay, getting better. How about if we try and go like this, sort of like flying fish. So these things can move absolutely fine under the water, they try and breach the surface, and as soon as they do, they go towards the closest target. Again, the AI is not finished yet, but I like the concept of it. Okay, starting to get more reliable now. Okay, one last test. I've tried to make the turning significantly sharper. Yeah, that is much better. Look at that. Even tracking down an enemy in its death circle. Perfect. Okay, now. Back to the adventure mode. That was like another 20 minutes. About to hit difficulty 55, so what I've done is I've spawned in three of the nukes, and what I'm going to do is have them set a little bit differently to the other drones. When all the other drones are released, they instantly turn on and go towards the target. The nukes, on the other hand, once all the drones are released, are just going to float there harmlessly, unless I manually turn them on. 
I don't want them going after every single enemy because sometimes that's just not going to be worth it. They're worth 4,000 resources each, which is kind of funny to me. They're worth double our original planes. So that amount of damage isn't always going to be worth that amount of resource. Sometimes, definitely. Sometimes, not at all. Well, I want to make sure these things work. Love how they exit the water. So no idea what we're actually attacking, but I've sent in two nukes regardless. Oh, I know you. You're the Valiant. Ooh, distractor drones. Interesting. The penguins. Wait, did I just read that correctly or not? Good. Engaging now. Make sure the nukes actually go for that, please. That would be lovely. Oh no, they're being attacked by the flak. I mean, it makes sense. They're going to be the smallest thing here, but also very difficult to see. So we're not doing a great job with it. So what should happen is we go above them, then circle down? Oh, that's been damaged. Yeah, they shouldn't be doing that weird up motion. It's been hit. In all the tests, it went down very, very fast. Still, though, it is approaching the enemy. Couple more of these weird circles, and that's going to be a hit. Yep, it didn't do, do the animation for some reason, but that was the new kit there. And a large section of its backside is gone. I think most of the weapons have been taken out by the heat, EMP, and just overall uh, pierce damage of our weapons. It fought, dare I say, valiantly. Oh, where did you come from? Yeah, I thought so. This thing does have decent anti-munition defense, but if we keep hitting it from the side and behind, a lot of the shots should go through. There we go, massive internal explosion there. Oh, that VTOL's been hit by so many cram shots. Still airborne, though. You see, now is when I need the nuke. Because a nuke can be so much more devastating versus more densely packed things like this, especially flying enemies, since it will take off a chunk from one specific area and make them incredibly unstable. The last target was just an awful target for the nukes, but don't worry, we'll have plenty of other attempts, and next time I'll make sure it can actually hit the target a bit easier. Though I'm fairly certain that was just from damage. So I found out what the issue was with the nukes. I'd made them too scared of the water. In some little tests I had versus boats, they kept getting stuck on the water and then going back underwater, which made them way slower, and I kind of overdid it. And that's why it was so high up before doing that death spiral. Now, it'll go to about this height and do the death spiral. Often it'll actually hit the side. I'll tweak it as we see things. These have been real problems. Oof, even with smoke, that's still doing quite a bit of damage. And with that annoying movement, the nukes are going to have a really tough time getting to you. There we go. Now I'm actually not locked. Still, I can see heat hitting, I can see the plasma hitting and some of the kinetic shells. Missiles are being countered quite heavily. Yeah, it has both lasers and anti-missile missiles. Saying that, we do have a lot of missiles, I suppose. Will the nuke actually reach it, though? Hello! <laughs> there goes a... Oh, right into the enemy! Look at that! Oh, that was beautiful! Okay, yeah, the nukes have definitely made up in this fight, because although I've lost 4,500 resources per nuke, the damage is stacking up, and this smoke doesn't last forever. It's avoided... Thousands of resource and repairs. You know what? I think I've just got a screenshot again. Go. 
Wow, amazingly, it's still going. That is incredible. Hats off to whoever made this thing, because it is sturdy. I doubt it's doing full damage now, though, because... Yeah, that's laser system it's cut through. I wonder what AI and everything is then. It's so squished. So, massive steam engines at the back. It's probably not doing much damage now, though. Yeah, I'm not seeing any blocks falling off, even though it's hitting here. So, it's a good job it turned off when it did, though, because it was getting through all that lovely front armor of the VTOL. There we go. Thank you, nukes. Well happy with that. I've only just realized how much more like a fish these thrusters have made these look. Really, really derpy goldfish. There were three of these. They were taken out pretty quickly, but I still want to use a nuke anyway. <laughs> it's just too fun. Oh, this one's bigger than the others, I just realized. I think he's quite vulnerable to heat. The first two just fell apart. This one seemed to stop attacking almost instantly. Ooh, right in the backside, which apparently was housing its engines. Wow. That's actually a much larger explosion than I expected. Laser systems gone. Uh, one of the cram, uh, two of the cram cannons completely disabled. I think there's another cram cannon injured on both sides. Is it actually sinking though? I couldn't see any engine pieces unless the engine was completely ripped out. Which, oh, something is ripped out. It stopped completely. Maybe it's AI. Well done, that nuke. Ended the fight before any real damage was done on either side. Wow. Okay, that's just cool. That's just really cool. I think after this adventure mode, I may just uh, spend a few days in the vehicle creator and just try and make something I'm really proud of, because I'm getting jealous of these designs. Oh, I didn't release- uh, realize I released a nuke. That's damaged. I can see half of it's missing. Okay. Uh, it might still reach the target, though. It's just having difficulty turning. Yep, once again, the backside of the thing. Not that effective this time, because, well, not much there. Core would have been far better. Ooh, not looking great now. A lot of it's missing. Welcome to difficulty 60, and what is that? Oh. It's adorable, and it's causing my entire game to lag out so badly. Apparently, the recording software is now yelling at me. Whoa. So you're 500k and all your drones are 40? Oh god, okay, so... I'm guessing they're very nasty shots. Uh, I'm thinking go after the drone parents and release the nukes in a second. The weather is really bad as well, which is not going to be helpful for this. I'm going to release all three, because honestly that thing scares me. Yep, I think he's right to be scared by this thing. But Nuke's having a really tough time locking onto this thing for some reason. Oh, there goes the head of it. Now it's only half smiling. Still going though, which is very impressive. So glad those VTOLs were as tanky as they are. Come on, keep on hitting that center. Let's get it to fall into the water. Let's drown it. I think one thing the last few fights have really taught me is that I need to go away from so much missile reliance. 
everything is anti-missile. I know I keep repeating that, but it's becoming more and more true to the point now where so many missiles are not hitting, it's just becoming a problem. Thankfully, with the heat shells and the, the little plasma hits and the more plasma hits and the small gauge um, normal guns, because we have so many of them, we are still doing massive damage and still getting victories, even when the nukes aren't used. Though the nukes definitely helped out in that fight, I'm so glad I had them. So, what I think I need to do is probably a major restructuring. I'm thinking removing some of our drones and changing them up. For instance, our planes have been surprisingly good, but they could be significantly better if they were pure plasma, for instance, or perhaps if they were using heat shells of their own, or just high damaging weapons, or even cram cannons. I think we need to start swapping over. That's not to say we won't use missiles at all. The subs have been fantastic for their low, low cost, so they're definitely going to stick around. I'm still going to use missiles on these VTOL. I actually want a third one, which will still use missiles. But any new drones are going to be more akin to the cannon drone and more... Better. Because I can't think of the word and the music stops. Now everything sounds awkward. Because me smart. Well, I will be calling it here, and like I probably mentioned earlier, there will be a slight delay between these videos, so expect about a week before the next video, but I'll be right back to this as soon as possible. I am still absolutely loving this run, and so happy to see where it's going next. Definitely more drones to come. This video was actually one of the longest out of all this series to record, and probably one of the shorter ones, because... Just loads of me being confused about things, which isn't really a surprise to anyone. So with that, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all the good stuff. Helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. And now, I'm going on a little mini-vacation, because Lathox's mind is all melty.